um, a very good evening and a warm welcome to the Buddhist Mahavira's uh, Facebook page and uh, Sukiho to, to one and all. Uh, we are back again uh, here at the Buddhist Mahavira's Dhammadana series uh, for another online Dhamma sharing, uh, this time by uh, Bhante Pesala from Sri Lanka. And we are actually continuing the um, series on studying the Dhammapada, um, which is a very interesting uh, publication that we have got here. And now today we are going still on chapter one, but we're going to cover verses 13 and 14. And to help us do that, let me invite Bhante Pesala to join us here in the studio. Good evening, Bhante. Welcome to the Buddhist Mahavira's Facebook page. Uh, is your, let me see, your audio is not on. Oh, sorry, the audio is not on, Bhante, sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the Buddhist Mahavira's Facebook page. Uh, for those no. of you, can yes, you we can hear you. yes, we can hear you now. Um, I've also got Rusty, but they haven't been online for a, for a while now. So yeah. <laughs> get used to StreamYard again. Uh, yeah. For those of you who are not familiar, Bhante Pesala uh, is a regular here at the Dhamma Dana series, uh, our online uh, Dhamma talks. And um, let me read Bhante's profile for those of you who are not familiar with Bhante Pesala. Uh, Bhante um, Katagoda Pesala Tera uh, is from Sri Lanka and he presently lives at the Labanuruva Kanda Forest uh, Monastery in Anadapura. Um, now he was ordained in 2017 and received his higher ordination in the year 2020. Uh, from the day of his ordination, he has been learning the Dhamma and Vinaya according to the Theravada tradition under the guidance of uh, Venerable uh, Mankadavala Sudhasana Tero and Venerable Mankadavala Nanda Ratana Tero, as well as Bhante Kotmale Kumara Kasapa Tero. Now, at the same time as a monk, while progressing in the path to Nibbana, as per the teachings of the Supreme Buddha, he is continuing to share or continuing to share the Dhamma with both uh, local and international communities under the Dhamma Dutta program conducted by the Labuna Ruwakanda Forest Monastery for the well-being of uh, humanity. So uh, without much ado, I would now like to invite Bhante Pesala to start this evening's Dhamma sharing to discuss the Dhammapada, chapter 1, uh, verses 13 and 14. Bhante? Okay, Mahatya, thank you very much for uh, handing over me the uh, opportunity. And Teruan Sarnai, uh, dear Dhamma friends, and good evening to all, uh, dear brothers and sisters of Dhamma. It's a great pleasure uh, for me to meet you all to talk about and discuss Dhamma, the noble teachings of our great teacher, Samma Sambuddha. Uh, after the talk, I'll be very happy to answer any of your questions uh, without much ado. Uh, let's begin by paying our homage to the Samma Sambuddha. All together, let's pay our homage. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa also, let's now uh, invite the devas to join with us. Samanta chakhavale su atra gachantu devata saddhammang munirajas sunanto sagga mukhadang dhamma savane kalo ayam bhadanta dhamma savane kalo ayam bhadanta Dhamma Savana Kalu Ayam Badanta. Dear Dhamma friends, as uh, Brother Dilak mentioned, uh, today we have uh, verse number 13 and 14th of the uh, first Vagga, Yamaka Vagga. So, verses as follows in Pali uh, Yathagaran Duchanam Uthi Samati Vijati Evang Abhavitam Chittam Prago Samati Vijati. Verse number 14. It is like this. Yathagaram Sujanam 
उठी न समति विद्यति एवं सुभावितं चित्तं रागो न समति विद्यति सो बिफोर आई फर्दर एक्सप्लेन देम आई जस्ट गिव यू एन सिंपल मीनिंग ऑफ द टू वर्सेस इन द फर्स्ट वर्स इट सेड इट सेस जस्ट एज रेन पेनिट्रेट्स अ बैडली रूफ्ड हाउस सो आल्सो पैशन और द राग पेनिट्रेट्स अ माइंड not cultivated in tranquility and insight development so that is the simple meaning of the first verse and uh, the the other one is just as rain cannot penetrate a well roofed house so also uh, passion or the rag cannot penetrate a mind uh, well cultivated in tranquility and insight development you know you may have heard the term samatha that is to gain the tranquility in the mind and uh, vipassana that is called insight meditation so those who have practiced those samatha and vipassana well they are having a you know a well established mind so the raga cannot penetrate them so uh, with that there is a beautiful story with this uh, verses and the story goes as this uh, these two verses buddha uttered about um, a uh, bhikkhu called nanda bhikkhu so this nanda bhikkhu is a uh, closest relative of the buddha he was a step brother of the buddha you know uh, before our buddha get in, get in the buddha hood he was known as prince siddhartha uh, uh, you know uh, he had two mothers one the mother who gave her the birth is named mahayama mahamaya devi and the other one the who, who who have nurtured known as mahaprajapati so the mahaprajapati's only son named as this uh, nanda dev nanda prince nanda so uh, that's why i said prince nanda initially uh, before he become a monk he was a step brother of the prince siddhartha so uh, they were uh, good friends since uh, childhood so you know after the 29 years of uh, luxurious life our great teacher supreme buddha as prince siddhartha you know uh, did the great renunciation that is known as in pali maha abhinikamana the meaning of that it is a great renunciation that you know uh, none can do that kind of renunciation because as a, as a king he was able to uh, control he was able to having all the luxuries as a human being but you know by keep them behind every luxurious comfortability he just did a great renunciation and at the age of uh, at the age of 29 he just did the great renunciation and after 7 years time after 6 years time he gained the buddhahood and after 1 years time you know all together after 7 uh, 7 years at the time uh, he decided to return back to the his hometown in order to preach the dhamma for the relatives and you know eventually he preached dhamma and you know in the first arrival uh, his father king suddhodana achieved achieved the fruition of uh, sakadagami sovan and anagan within a few few uh, days you know in the third day Mm. there was a they are, they were planned they were planned to conduct three events the those uh, three events were named as uh, the coronation of the prince nanda to become a king and also there is a, a newly built palace and they wanted to open the palace and also uh, there was a, they planned to conduct a wedding ceremony that was uh, by the prince nanda he uh, was to uh, marry a beautiful uh, fiance that named as janapada kalyani the meaning of that uh, uh, the princess name the meaning of that name janapada kalyani mean she was the most prettiest uh, girl in that city so that's why she was named as janapada kalyani so you know uh, after the this uh, though they have planned these three even uh, you know the third day they used to visit the uh, palace with 20000 monks and he eventually had the arms and you know after uh, 
finishing the arms uh, ceremony he conducted few sermons and thereby few more uh, relatives gained the dharma knowledge and at, at some attained the you know the arya states that mean the, they have understood the dharma and you know eventually when he was returning back to the monastery from the palace uh, you know uh, normally he used to take back the arms bowl but this time especially he just hand over the arms bowl to the prince nanda so this prince nanda uh, he was about to become a king and he was about to marry and he, he was about to have a good luxury to his life and uh, you know he didn't know what is what is going to happen to him by not by not knowing anything he just followed the buddha and as usual buddha didn't take the take back the bowl also so he was just following the buddha and buddha was also uh, progressing towards the monastery at that time buddha had uh, you know uh, ordained so many bhikkhus among the sakyan so there was a rumor going on uh, buddha is going to take all the princes all the prince princes and all the all the young young people in the sakyan clan you know buddha wants to become um, convert them to monks so this rumor heard by the janapada kalyana princess and she you know immediately rushed forth towards the uh, this prince nanda and said uh, okay you go with the buddha but you have to return back immediately you know by imploring uh, the returning he just she just requested from the prince nanda and the words uttered by this princess you know touched the bottom of the heart of the prince nanda you know with that he just uh, followed the buddha and reached the monastery after reaching to the monastery buddha was asking from the nanda nanda would you like to become a monk at that time she he had great respect to the buddha and he was unable to re- reject the the order the the request done by the buddha so he just immediately he just uh, responded positively and uh, because of that buddha asked the other monks to make prince nanda uh, a monk so they monk all together uh, ordained the prince nanda as a bhikkhu and after that uh, within another few days time buddha just returned from that from that home city to the rajagaha where the buddhas you know most of the uh, life span buddha spent in the rajagaha rajagaha savatthi so that savatthi town buddha is staying with prince nanda and prince, prince nanda though he didn't have any interest towards the monkhood he had to perform the monk duties as a monk but he, he didn't have any interest so you know after few days more it was happened that uh, uh, the words uttered by prince Jan, princess janapada kalyani always keep remembering keep throbbing into the mind of prince nanda and he was unable to perform any kind of uh, bhavana or any kind of monkhood duty so the, the the friends bhikkhus the the bhikkhus who were around the prince uh, prince nanda now he is a monk um, bhikkhu uh, nanda heard about this and he said to them that i am i have no interest towards this monkhood i want to become a householder and i want to have that uh, the king chip and all the luxuries i want to have and eventually this uh, his declaration his uh, words came into the buddha's uh, ear also at that time buddha asked buddha summoned bhikkhu nanda to to him and asked the asked the reason behind so then he said to the buddha i was i am not i don't have an interest towards this monkhood so i want to become a layman i want to become a householder so at that time you know uh, our great teacher with utmost compassion uh, uh, with his super normal psychic power because you know buddha he is a super super be, human being he is a supreme buddha he was having so many psychic and supernormal capabilities he can uh, connect with the celestial worlds so he just took this bhikkhu nanda and he accompanied him to the uh, place where there is a fire i mean there was a jungle you know burnt out with fire and uh, one of the in one of a tree Uh, the female monkey burnt down and she was hanging in in a tree and in the first time this uh, prince bikunanda observed that uh, female monkey 
and after that buddha accompanied uh, the prince nanda to the thousands of uh, heaven in that heaven there was 500 angels were there so they were so much pretty and buddha asked from the prince nanda nanda would you like to uh, nanda what do you think which one is the most prettiest one the princess janapada kalyani or these 500 angels at that time this uh, prince Na bikunanda replied to the buddha bante uh, with compared to uh, this uh, 500 angels janapada kalyani i seems it seems to me like that uh, like that of the the burnt out female monkey so i mean uh, the celestial beings are so much pretty and uh, beautiful so then buddha said okay then if you can perform the monk duties well i will promise you to give 500 uh, these i would i would promise you to give promise you to have these uh, 500 angels so you know at that time uh, these bikunanda was amazed and happy and uh, buddha and himself eventually returned to the monastery and he started to uh, do bhavana well do monk duties well because of because that he's going to get 500 angels so eventually the other monks also came to know that this bikunanda is performing monk duties not to gain any enlightenment but to gain 500 angels so he was uh, the, the other monks other bhikkhus around they were ridiculed the bhikkhunanda by saying you are like a hireling because you know hireling when they perform something at the end of the day hirelings are getting some payments like that of you are the same you are doing this monk duties not to you know become enlightened but to gain the angel so he was uh, the, at, uh, when hearing these ridicules from the other bhikkhus this prince nanda was so ashamed and embarrassed so he thought to meditate much more and he, he thought to find the real essence of the life so then he focused the dhamma and he was doing bhavana very well and he gained the enlightenment as he, he became an ar enlightened bhikkhu as an arahant and after the enlightenment he returned back to the buddha and informed about his achievement and you know uh, before even uh, arriving bhikkhunan the buddha was with his supernormal powers he knew that he had already achieved the en enlightenment at that time uh, prince Na bhikkhunanda was said bante uh, venerable sir the promise that you have given me i am now releasing you from that promise then buddha said already at the moment you gain the enlightenment you have released from that your promise buddha said so uh, after you know in after that event he just uh, uh, prince bhikkhunanda bhikkhunanda came to the monastery and he was uh, living as an enlightened being and uh, you know uh, uh, the other monks then uh, you know continuously they were ridiculing and criticizing him about it about his behavior the other because they didn't know that he already gained the enlightenment because they were still ridiculing him and that, at that time he said no now i am not i i don't have any uh, you know I, I have all the enth enthusiasm all the interesting to being as a monk i want to become be as a monk uh, i don't want, want to return to the you know lay life at that time the monk uh, who were ridiculed him it, they just uh, uh, suspicion they, they, they just they just had suspicion on him uh, as to think that they were think this bikunanda was lying and they were informed the buddha about the matter that is the occasion buddha uttered these two verses yathagaram duchannam utthi samati vidyati evam abhavitam chittam Rago Samati Vidyati. Yathagaram Duchanna. That means uh, he talks about uh, uh, Buddha, you know, as I explained in the early uh, verses, Dhammapada. It's a habit of uh, giving the similes by the Buddha. Because, you know, by the similes, we can understand uh, the meanings of the Dhamma. We can grab the, grasp the meaning of the, you know, subtle factors of the Dhamma. So it's, it is like this. Suppose, if I am showing you the moon by using my finger, at that time you have to look towards the moon, not towards my finger. So similarly, when the 
you know similes are given you have to focus on the essence of the simile not just the simile so uh, here the buddha given the buddha has given a beautiful simile it is said yatha garam duddhanna mutthi samuti vidyati it means if there is a roof uh, not well covered so when the rain is coming you know water will penetrate the house uh, penetrate the roof and water will eventually uh, touch by the uh, equipment and goods and items in the house so eventually they damaged so similarly evam abhavitam chittam ragu samati vichati so if a disciple disciple and uh, you know savaka mean disciple is there that he is not practicing the mind he is not developing the mind he is not doing bhavana he is like the like that of the you know uh, the the roof that is not yet uh, not properly uh, covered so his mind also like that always rag there is a mohan defilements coming and damage the inner peacefulness so that is the meaning of the first verse and it says in the second verse it says yatha garam suchanna in the in the second case uh, in the simile that if there is a roof well covered with proper roofing when the rain is coming uh, the water cannot penetrate inside the house because roof is properly covered evam subhavitam chittam suppose there is a follower he subhavitam chittam so he uh, well developed the bhavana you know uh, most people uh, translated bhavana into the term called meditation that is actually not giving you the proper meaning actually bhavana means bhave titi bhavana so it yeah, so bhavana mean not just uh, do sitting in a secluded sitting in seclusion and doing uh, meditation you know bhavana mean developing enhancing multiplying your mind into you know wholesome qualities that can be done at any posture it can be done so bhavana is is a thing that a bhikkhu you know as a bhikkhu as i said Uh, we have to do lots of uh, physical duties as a monk could duties are there so we have to perform them even performing them we have to maintain that bhavana so that is the nature of the bhavana so in that way we have to do bhavana you know there are two main ways of doing bhavana named as uh, samatha and vipassana most people most even uh, not only in buddhism even in other religions also they doing the samatha bhavana that means Uh, if you, you if you can focus your mind in into any kind of object for a, a longer period of time automatically the, the samadhi will happen but in the Buddh- in buddhism the speciality of you know speciality is lying on the vipassana uh, you know that begins with the right view or the samaditti so so when one knows the vipassana he knows the real nature of the world you know at that time he can do bhavana well so that's why uh, first we must find real kalyana mitra real true friends true friends mean those who talk real dhamma you know when we understand this dhamma you know uh, we are not uh, taken this buddhism as a religion you begin to see your life yourself and the, the whole world you begin to experience at that time you are not believing in you are experiencing so like most people going behind religions that is because of the beliefs they they have some heavy kind of you know uh, fear with them so in that way they just uh, following the religions they don't, don't know the, the results when they follow those religions they don't know what will they what what are going to happen to them without knowing any idea they just follow but when you have vipassana it is not like that you are experience to understand that i will give you a simile like you know when you perform uh, for an example we take the uh, anapanasati meditation anapanasati mean inhaling and exhaling meditation it's, it automatically whether we are not we, whether we aware or not that that is a natural process even at the beginning of the life life up until the end of the life that inhaling and exhaling process is happening so when we focus on to that process 
you know our uh, samadhi or the the the, the one pointedness of the mind will develop and uh, you know you will understand only the uh, you know once you perform that meditation properly for a, a long period of time and if you practice consistently you can experience that is called in pali aswasa praswasa khai that means you will experience this inhaling and exhaling process like the body like a body suppose uh, all of us having a body right now so we, we all know that it's for sure that we have a body physical body that i mean in that there's nothing to believe we know for sure we are experiencing that we are having a body in the similar way when you focus your uh, meditation on the anapana sati or the inhaling and exhaling process you begin to experience the the inhaling and exhaling process like a body so at that time that's what that's what called aswas paswas khaya so at that time you don't have any experience about your physical body as a body you experience only the inhaling and exhaling process but just imagine it happens when you do the anapana sati meditation properly because Uh, you know the other times when you are not doing any meditation at that time also you are you are doing your inhaling and exhaling process but you are not focusing on to that so it's a, the inhaling exhaling process is a, it's a reality it is happening as i said from the beginning of the life up until the end of the life that process is going on so when you when you focus your mind you begin to experience it so in that process there is nothing to believe similarly when you understand this dhamma you begin to experience i mean this anicca and this four noble truths and this five aggregates are not just something to believe actually we have to experience it so um, someone uh, wants to think about suppose uh, about inhaling and exhaling process i mean there is nothing to believe it happening it, it, it already happening within us so similarly dhamma is also like that so in that way you can get that vipassana then when you have the vipassana you know uh, in vibhutta ayatana kind of sutra it says like you can gain samadhi not just by meditation samatha meditation by listening dhamma you can have the liberation uh, and when you after listening dhamma when you when you suppose like me if you want to teach someone at that time you can gain liberation and someone can recite the dhamma at that time he can gain the liberation and also someone uh, perform the vipassana on him at that time he can gain the liberation and at the at last uh, like the most uh, followers believe uh, someone doing samatha and develop the samadhi first and when the mind is uh, calm then tranquil and focused on the one object and he can uh, do vipassana on that object at that time he can Uh, gain the you know liberation so there are so many ways if you know vipassana so you can uh, spend your life happily even suppose when you are doing a busy work schedule when you are having a busy life at that time also you have you can maintain your peacefulness if you know mind because you know uh, the, the to explain that i mean i will give you a similar life suppose uh we we can observe images in the mirrors you know uh, so when we seeing the mir- images in the mirrors uh, we know for sure that that the images are not the persons they are not beings they are just uh, the reflection of ourselves but you know when an animal reaches in front of the before the uh, mirror uh, they also observe the images but you know the innocent animal they wrongly perceive the image as other beings so those beings whether they are busy or not whether they are running whether whether they are doing suppose for a, for a moment we think that animals they do in meditation they know they they try to do some other but still you know they have the wrong perception that even by doing some other they can see only an animal inside the mirror so that's a wrong way of understand suppose as human we know even we are we suppose uh, when we are at a busy time and we happen to go before the mirror at that time also we notice our images are reflecting on the mirror at that time also we not wrongly perceive 
that mirror that mirror image as a person or a thing because we know for sure that uh, it is a, it is just a mirror it's just an image it's not a person like it's a person it's not a person or thing that can be touched just a reflection of ourselves even we are at the busy work we know for that similar thing happen when you have the right to understand when you are so much busy of your day to day life activity even even that times also you can maintain your uh, you know mental peacefulness that's what you get uh, when you uh, understand when you gain the insight that is called the vipassana knowledge that's why i always used to say vipassana means what we mean uh, it's a you know uh, uh, it's in bali scale upasarga mean it, it added to a word just to uh, give a me- meaning and passat passana mean seeing vipassana mean seeing things clearly so when you see things clearly then uh, you know you will get an extra ordinary knowledge in order to face your life trouble so with that time also passing i would like to uh, come to end of this dhamma talk and uh, this is the time if you have any question you can uh, i can answer this uh, answer your question thank you bante thank you for your explanation on the uh, two verses of the dhammapada um from what i see there are no questions from the audience at the moment uh, so if there are no questions um, maybe we can then proceed to the anumodana bante okay okay thank you okay with that uh, we have now come to the end of the program let's do anumodana uh, first of all i would like to share all these dhammadana merits and virtues to my teachers especially venerable man kadavala sudarshana teera and venerable man kadavala andara kumar teera venerable man kotmali kumar kasab teera now my bante my uh, teachers they are having some uh, sicknesses and may they uh, you know get cured soon with this merits and may they be well be happy and may they find the ultimate peace of nibbana so and also i would like to mention uh, brother tilak and the staff of the buddhist mahavihara and the sponsors of today's dhamma talk and all the participants as well in person and online and to all sentient beings i would like to share all these merits etavata ja ammeri sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhya sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhya sabbe sapta anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhya and also let's share the merits with our dear departed relatives and friends idham me nyati nam hotu sukhita hontu nyate yo idham me nyati nam hotu sukhita hontu nyate idham me nyati nam hotu sukhita hontu nyate yo and i'm now now blessing all of you uh, with the uh, abhivadana series of verse that is also very special verses you know abhivadana series to me when you are uh, you know venerating when you are worshiping the the bhikkhus like they are having moral conduct they are having knowledge bhikkhu sangha because they are having a beautiful mind so when you perform veneration when you give requisites when you offer dana to them you will get four things are you one sapa are you one sapa bala that means you get the you know a life uh, you can live long life and one mean you you can develop your inner qualities and sukha mean you can have the a uh, physical comfortable life as well as the mental comfort that means when you perform med- meditation you can easily get the jhanas kind of things easily that's called sukha bala mean you are, you have to you can gain the physical uh, uh, i mean uh, healthy body and as well as you can have the you know uh, healthy mind as well when you venerating the uh, sangha especially the the ethical and moral conduct well behaved one when you venerate in that way you will go get those men that is the meaning of that verse so with that verse i would like to bless you abhihadana silissa nicham vadha pachayino tattaro dhamma vardhanti ayu anno sukham balam ayu arogya sampatti sagga sampatti mevacha atho nibbana sampatti vinate samidhyato
and thank you very much i shall see you all at the next session everyone sir nai good night to everyone thank you bante thank you for uh, conducting the anumodana um, so yeah we have come to the end of this evening dhamma session uh, about the dhamma pada verses uh, 13 and 14 uh, before we end, I would like to remind our, our viewers that Bante will be back with us on April uh, 23rd, uh, also a Sunday night, and Bante will be talking of Chapter 1 of the Dhammapada, uh, verse 15. Uh, Bante will be yeah. explaining verse 15 of the Dhammapada. Uh, so with that, on behalf of the Committee of Management and the monks of the Buddhist Mahavihara, thank you Bante for spending time with us this evening. I will be very lucky because Bante is men mentioning that uh, just before this Dhamma talk, there was a power cut in Sri Lanka yeah. and power just came back uh, just yeah. a couple of minutes before the Dhamma talk uh, started. And also to our sponsors, again, uh, thank you for sponsoring this evening's uh, Dhamma sharing so that at least we can have this talk online. And to all our viewers, thank you for spending time with us and hope to look forward to seeing you again uh, very soon. Please uh, look out for the posters on our Facebook pages. With that, good night and Sukihoto. Yeah,